What's up, iFlyers? Today we are in Ronda in the south of Spain, and we get to check out a pistachio farm that's owned by the founder of Dutch Passion, Hank van Dalen. How are you doing, Hank? Hello. How, yeah, I'm doing fine, aren't you? Oh, I'm doing fantastic, especially yeah. here in all of this heat. Hey, yeah. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is, uh, these are the premises of uh, Ronda Pistachios here. Uh, you just see me, you don't see the pistachios at this moment, but we're going to have a look at them. They're uh, six years old, so, uh, well, the first harvest we had last year, this year the second one. You see the pistachios, they're uh, growing very well, they look very nice. And um, well, about the pistachios, about how they grow, uh, you'll have an introduction by my socio, Joaquin. Hey, how are you doing today, brother? Hola, ¿qué tal? Okay. So, what can you tell me about the cultivation of pistachios? Eh, para cultivar los pistachos, lo importante, o lo, quizás lo primero, que tengamos inviernos fríos uh -huh. y veranos calurosos. Aunque puedes regarlo, hay unos de riego, otros que son, no son de riego, pero en secano se cultivan muy bien. Con estas temperaturas, incluso con estas temperaturas, va muy bien. La recolección será en, en septiembre, octubre, y también veréis que hay algunos que tienen fruto y otros que no tienen. Hay machos y hembras. Los machos tienen que polinizar la flor de la hembra porque no lo polinizan la, las abejas. Entonces, tiene que haber mínimo un 7%, del 7 al 11% de, de machos en toda la plantación. Y más o menos funciona. Just like cannabis. So let's take a walk through the farm. Mm -hmm. Yes, let's do that. Let's have a look. Aquí vamos a tener uno. Ok. Ya tenemos aquí. Yeah. Aún le falta, le falta un mes. Pero mira. A ver si lo puedo. Mira qué pistacho, me acuerdo. Mira qué pistacho. Super Kerman. Uf. Well, it's hard, ¿no? Yeah. Oh, it's delicious. Yeah, yeah. It's so sweet. We just finally got out of the heat that is that pistachio farm and we are here in Ronda. We're gonna sit down at an umbrella, have ourselves something super cold to drink and enjoy the day. All right, High Flyers, we just sat down. We're finally gonna get some food in our bellies and we've got an opportunity to speak with Hank about his experience as the founder of Dutch Passion. Yeah. Hank, you mind if I ask you a few questions? No, please do. All right. Well, let's start with maybe the most basic of them. How did you get started with cannabis seed and when? Yes, I started with uh, cannabis seeds in 1972. That was the time that uh, I, I put the first uh, seeds in the soil and they did well. So, um, yeah, then... Uh, but 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 I just was growing them indoors in pots, so uh, they didn't get flowers. And uh, so it took a few years later, in the end of the 70s, and then I started to put more seeds uh, uh, in the soil and uh, uh, have a garden outside. And well, this this is where it all started. But it started uh, with smoking cannabis, and it started with uh, seeds uh, from uh, the cannabis that I uh, bought from uh, from from dealers. So how did you go from growing some seeds from the weed that you were smoking indoors to starting a cannabis seed company in 1987? Well, this is because I was not growing only uh, indoors, but the most of most of it was grown uh, outdoors and it was uh, stolen uh, a few years. So I was, I was growing in Amsterdam and it was not possible anymore to grow in Amsterdam. So. I went out of Amsterdam in the countryside to find people who could uh, produce cannabis, and uh, they did. Um, so the first years I just did cannabis, but then I realized that um, uh, doing seeds uh, would have uh, a better position to go international and uh, to do more about uh, the legalization of, uh, of cannabis. When you were first starting out this cannabis seed company in a legal fashion, what were some of your biggest obstacles? 
Uh, one of the obstacles was that uh, I had to create a network of uh, people who were growing cannabis and who um, uh, would like to grow seeds also. And because there, was not, not, there wasn't a seed market, so we had to develop a seed market and finding people who wanted to grow seeds was quite a difficult thing because uh, at first they, they, they have to see that it works before they, before they start. But I found some people and, that I started with and uh, in the end the network was there. I understand that there's some interesting experimentation going on in Holland right now. Um, they uh, traditionally and historically as it's been, coffee shops exist, they can sell their weed, but getting that weed is completely illegal and growing it's illegal. And it seems like there's a new experiment going on, um, supposedly it's going to be for the next four years, where some specific licenses have been given for legal production of cannabis. Uh, what do you think about the situation in Holland right now with cannabis? So there's uh, 10 uh, companies companies that have been uh, selected to grow uh, legally uh, cannabis but this uh, still has to happen yeah uh, the ministry of justice uh, still has to say okay yeah for for all the for all the companies and uh, um, that, that, that can uh, last some time and uh, well on the other hand I, I, I also think that, that uh, the four year uh, project will last uh, much longer because uh, when we look at the, the, the time scale now, what has been done, it takes a lot more than uh, what is the idea. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So I guess that in Holland in the end we'll have uh, legal cannabis or uh, at least uh, uh, cannabis legal, legally grown cannabis in some shops because it's the experiment I think that will uh, take uh, six seven eight years oh wow and before the whole of Holland is going to have it, it, it it'll be uh, it'll be many years uh, more I guess yeah. so there's a lot of uncertainty there's even with this experiment there's a lot of uncertainty with cannabis in Holland yeah yeah that's correct that's correct so uh, but we we are heading this way and uh, it, it will take a lot more time than, uh, than is expected, I think. Um, there's also another thing, and that's uh, yeah, uh, get, getting, getting cannabis legal worldwide. Uh, then it would help very much when uh, the USA, when uh, a federal law will uh, decriminalize cannabis as well. Sure. No, that's a big one. Um, the United States created a lot of laws about 70 years ago that changed everything. Yeah, right. What brought you down here to the south of Spain, specifically Ronda? Yeah, um, the south of Spain is uh, clear, that's the, the climate. It's a climate which is very nice year-round, except, except for uh, July and August, which is too hot. <laughs> Tell me about uh, it. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> your experience now. And, um, well, also the clean air, there's not many people living here. And, um, well, the people are nice also. So I like, I like very much to, to live here in uh, the southern part of, uh, of Spain. It's perfect. And so you decided to mount a pistachio farm. What inspired you to do that? How did you go from cannabis to pistachios? Well, yeah, yeah, it's a question. It's a total different thing, of course. And, uh, well, because it's a total different thing. Because I was starting cannabis uh, more than 40 years ago in uh, Holland. And in this time I was, was thinking, yeah, maybe at the end, at the end of my uh, career, there will, will be, be, be cannabis which is totally legal, mm -hmm. and um, uh, but it's not. And at this moment, I do not see also that in my working years uh, in front of me, it, it will be legal. So uh, cannabis is has been um, uh, against against the flow, uh, against uh, the stream, working against the stream. So what kind of things did you learn from your time, all of this time, in the cannabis industry and developing and being innovative in the cannabis industry that you're bringing with you into this pistachio project um, that you're trying to get on the floor? Yeah, well, for uh, one part, that's the trust in uh, starting a company, starting a seed company, and that it works. Yeah. So I think this is the main thing. Yeah, because I think uh, that passion worked and works very, very well. So uh, uh, I and all the people involved did a, did a very good job, and. Um, that gave me the trust that starting this company, this company, uh, Ronda Pistachios, will work also.
Well, Hank, I really appreciate all of this time that you've showed us around the pistachio farm, that you've sat down with us and you've had a discussion about the roots of Dutch passion and what your ideas are on the cannabis industry. And I got to tell you, I can't wait to hang out with you again one of these days soon. Okay. Hey, thank you very much for uh, having your time also to talk with me about the companies uh, I do. Yeah. Oh, thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Okay. Amen. Thanks. Guys, we're going to finish up with our dinner here. I'm going to have another beer, maybe something super cold, a nice ice water. And then we're going to get the hell out of Dodge, and we'll see you next time. Stay high. Bye. Hey, what's up, guys? I hope you liked the video. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to follow us on Instagram. Until next time, stay high.